Good afternoon, everyone, and to some people, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Dojo Live show. Today is Tuesday, October 19th, 2021. I'm Tulio Siragusa, broadcasting from Southern California. Joining me today are Kim Lantis in Hermosillo, Mexico, and Carlos Ponce in Cuernavaca, Mexico. Hi, guys. Hello. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. And our guest. Shira Shamban, who's the CEO and co-founder at Solvo, who is uh, broadcasting all the way from Tel Aviv. Welcome to the show, Shira. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. We're looking forward to speaking with you about uh, one of my favorite topics, developers uh, and, and turning them into heroes. What kind of heroes? Security heroes. But before we go into the topic and dig right in and see what we can learn. We'd love to get to know you a little bit. So if you could uh, just introduce yourself, Shira. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So I was born and raised in Israel. And after a short uh, uh, military experience here, uh, mandatory uh, uh, Israeli uh, uh, ser military service is mandatory, usually for a couple of years. Uh, I sticked around for 13 years in the Israeli intelligence. Uh, it was quite the experience. Uh, uh, I got to meet all kinds of people. Uh, I got to do uh, really amazing things. And the amount of responsibility I was given as a young 18, 19, 20 years old uh, a woman is incredible. And I think that sometimes people don't get that kind of experience in a lifetime. I got to be the commander and the manager uh, of, of dozens of, of soldiers and, and officers. And I got to learn a lot about myself and about how to motivate people. Uh, other than that, uh, I like to do sports. I play tennis. Uh, I try to wake up at 5, 5.30 a.m. every day uh, uh, because I want to make uh, the most out of, of every day. And I find that the morning hours are really good. So for those of you who are looking for another couple of hours every day, I highly recommend uh, waking up early uh, uh, because these hours are super effective. Even if you think to yourself that you're not a morning person, it's a matter of a habit. Uh, and I find it very, very useful. Well, thanks for the introduction. Uh, Sheer is like total badass. That's the only way to describe, you know, your, your, your background. So awesome. Yes. Now tell yes. us a little bit about Solvo. What's Solvo all about? Absolutely. So uh, about a year and a half ago, a little more actually, uh, I founded Solvo with my partner uh, in crime, David. David and I both worked for another cloud security company uh, that got acquired. But during our time of working there and, and developing the product that we worked on, we got to, to meet different kinds of, of security products. And one of the things both of us found really un, not unusual because it was super usual was the fact that um, most of them are focused on telling you what you're doing wrong or finding security issues and problems and uh, malicious activities and anomalies. But then the security practitioner looks on the screen, the, the, the SOC analyst looks at the screen and all they see is dozens and dozens, and dozens of alerts that needs to be fixed, that need, needs to be addressed. And all they really feel is, oh my God, I need a break. I need a cigarette. I need a cup of coffee. This is a nightmare. So they actually feel more frustrated by using your product. And we thought to ourselves- I oh, imagine that there's also this like ostrich with the head in the sand kind of thing. Yes. I'm like, well, nothing's happened yet. So I guess I can ignore them. Let's snooze this for the next yeah. person who comes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And we thought to ourselves that today we have enough technical knowledge uh, to actually help the users and make them feel more relieved. Now, our focus was cloud security because this is our background. And this is what we know how to do. So we developed a platform that instead of telling you what you're doing wrong and here's a list of issues you need to fix is actually a part of the development and integration process and just telling you listen dude we know that you don't really know how to do this let us give you the most accurate recommendation as to how to get the most secured 
cloud infrastructure for your cloud application. So the users don't have to bother themselves with, hmm, how do I prevent access to this uh, highly sensitive uh, uh, data or that crown jewels? They know that what they really have to focus on is their business and their code. And Solvo is there to make sure that everything is running on the most secured and least privileged uh, cloud infrastructure possible. So in a way, we're a centralized uh, uh, platform to automatically manage uh, uh, security permissions and access in the cloud. Very nice. All right, let's see what we can unpack today. And let's go right into the topic and the subject of today's show. Carlos, please kick it off. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tulio. So in case you're wondering how security products can be force multipliers that help us to deliver faster to production, well, stick around because this is exactly what we're going to be talking about today with our guest. So today's topic, as chosen by Shira, is turning software developers into security heroes. Okay, so the first question that I have for you, Shira, why did you choose this particular topic for today's conversation and why did you feel it was relevant for today's day and age? Thank you. Sure. Well, we often hear uh, this phrase that security is everyone's job when talking about software development now. Uh, so security is everyone's job. And when we say it, we actually meet, we actually look at developers when we say that uh, because they are... Uh, uh, writing the software, they are shipping the software, but up until now, they were not held responsible for um, issues in their code. Uh, if they wrote it and it's, it has some vulnerabilities in it, be it a zero day or be it a, a day one kind of vulnerability, they're not held accountable for it. Uh, they assume that there are security engineers somewhere along the pipe that will help them fix that. And maybe that was true in the on-prem days where you had the R&D silo, the IT silo, and the security silo. But today when we're working in the cloud, uh, these are no longer separate domains. Today, everything is a little mixed. The DevOps engineers have a lot to do with security today, just like the software developers have to do with security because of the code that they're writing because of the power that they have spinning up and down a, a cloud assets. Um, so, so that phrase, security is everyone's job, is true. But we mm. need to see how we're going to empower developers to be the kind of heroes that we want them to be. So wow. historically, Thank you. Shira, that's been the sort of mindset of security is somebody else's job, right? I'm here to just develop the code and someone else will take care of that. Like you said, it stems from the on-prem enterprise software model back in the day. Everything is deployed online now. So you said something about helping them make make it their job. What? How do you do that? Have you gamified this for them? What's How does that work? What does that mean? So very often we just talk about it. And every now and then there is a security training in your company uh, or you, you send the developers to a workshop and they, you know, roll their eyes and just, you know, play on their computer or smartphone and wait for this day to end. And they don't um, implement a half uh, of what they heard that day. So today we kind of understand that just telling them it's your job and you need to do it, that doesn't work. Uh, we had to find a different way to do it. And honestly, I think that the best way, other than telling them, listen, it's everyone's job, is to equip, equip, equip them with the right tools. And it's not even uh, gamification. Even though uh, the Solvo console, we created it uh, some, somewhat gamified. We have a lead board of the, the best developers who, who needed the least corrections. Uh, but other than that, I think that the best thing we can do is to tell them, hey, here is a framework or here is a product that is going to take it off of your plate now because this is prone to mistakes. By the way, not only by developers. Security engineers do mistakes. DevOps engineers do mistakes. So it's not like we're looking for a person to blame. We're just looking for the best tool 
to help you prevent the, these kind of mistakes. 80% of them are preventable. You know, the, let's keep the, the 20% of the most sophisticated ones to the security practitioners to, to really face those, those you know, deep and difficult issues. So my nice. question is, how exactly is Solvo working? Like, I understand, I understand your tool is the tool that tells me the tools that I need. Like, <laughs> so like, what do I do? I come in and say, hey, like, this is my stack. This is what I'm accomplishing. This is the type of information I'm dealing with. Is it just like this kind of plug and chug? And then you say, you know what? These are your top four areas that should be secured. These are the highest recommendations. Uh, do you put them into communication with providers? Like, how does it work if I'm the, the developer who's making this my responsibility? So actually, we're not a tool, a, a tool aggregator. We are the tool that creates the security uh, permission, the security policy that you actually need. And this is how it works. You have a pre-production environment. Uh, actually, with our customers, I heard every number between uh, zero and nine, zero being uh, the company that deploys directly to production, and nine being a company that has nine different pre-production environments before your code makes it to production. So assuming you have more than zero environments uh, in the pre-production, um, what we do is uh, a view uh, um, the actions that are being taken, that your application is executing in that environment, meaning you had a Lambda function reading an item out of a database. You had an EC2 uh, trying to make an action uh, on an S3 bucket. You have dozens and dozens uh, of, of API calls every second. And Solvo uh, sees all of these. We are not a gateway for your actions. We assume that if your code uh, tried to execute an action, it's probably because it needed to. Uh, and by doing that, we understand the behavior and the context of the application. And at that point, it takes us between a few minutes to a few hours to understand what your application is doing. Your application is a bank application that writes uh, the statement and uh, reduce, deducts uh, the fund that you spent, uh, for example. So we understand what your application is doing. We understand that um, your Lambda function needed access to read an item out of a DynamoDB. So we just craft the security policy that gives access to a specific Lambda function into an S3 bucket, a specific S3 bucket, only for the read action. And the reason that we do that is because the common practice today uh, of developers is giving the uh, full access, uh, the admin permissions. So theoretically, a Lambda function could access all the S3 buckets in the account because you just granted it with full access. It, it only needs to read an item, but now we have allowed it to write and delete. And this means that if an external, uh, a malicious uh, uh, actor gets a hold of this Lambda function, they can uh, uh, corrupt the S3 bucket with all the data inside. They can uh, uh, run some uh, ransomware in your AWS account and all because you have allowed one Lambda function, uh, full access or admin privileges so by understanding the context of the application, we craft the necessary security permissions for every component in your cloud environment, meaning it is only allowed to do uh, the necessary actions. Shira, nice. we're discussing turning software developers into heroes, right? So to that end, uh, what would you tell to developers who feel that there's a, that they have a, a love-hate relationship with security between development and security? There is always the tension between the security organization and, uh, and the R&D organization. Um, one of uh, the, there was a CISO I talked to, uh, and and he told me that his security team needs to audit AWS accounts in his organization. So uh, whenever they have to run that audit, the R and D team refuses to give uh, uh, credentials to the account 
to the security team. They are only willing to share screen with them over Zoom. And then the security team has to go and ask, oh, show me this, show me that, click here, click there. Because this really weird and unhealthy relationship between security <laughs> and R&D. If the R&D team uh, is always afraid to see an email or a new message uh, uh, from the security team, the security team actually feels really intimidated uh, and uh, they are afraid that the R&D team is not going to cooperate with them and help them and uh, just, uh, you know, work with them to improve the security posture of the organization. So this is a pretty complicated relationship. Now, what we actually want to achieve, it's not only Solvo, this is really an approach uh, uh, with every... A, a security preaching a, a organization. I'm, all, I'm, I'm also a, a co-chair of OSP Israel. OSP is an organization that helps a, a web application developers to implement better, better security a, 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 a workflows. And what we really see is always this tension and the difficulty to create a healthy um, work culture. So what I think is, is the best thing to do to reduce that tension is to have a much more open relationship where the security team understands uh, the mindset of the developers who, actually, who are actually afraid of uh, more, more work and, and more uh, people yelling at them that they're not delivering what they were asked to. And for the, sec for the security team to understand uh, 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 the mindset of the developers and the other way around for the developers to understand that the CISO has to report the board about vulnerabilities and about the bug bounties that were uh, uh, found uh, and that everyone is just trying to do the best job they can uh, to make sure that our organization is up and running and working and that, are, that our crown jewels are, are well protected. All right. So... What I'm, what I'm hearing, Shira, is there's two things. One is there's a weight, a change needed in okay. the perception or the relationship between developers and security to work from the same side of the table as the same team interested in the same thing, right? So, and we can understand it, right? Someone who gives full admin access to an application, it's be, it's just an easier thing to do and then deal with the security later. At least that's the mindset, right? But that doesn't always work out because sometimes you forget and you don't deal with it later and now you've got an exposure problem. Mm -hmm. So would you think that it's important to build into, let's say it's an agile shop, into the stories and the sprint development, the security requirements so that, and how does Solvo come into play from the beginning? Like when you're planning the actual uh, build out, but it's a two week sprint and you're building out functionality for access levels, et cetera. Is it important to define that with the security team and then use the application to automatically generate this? Is that the best way this would work? So first of all, I would like to share a little practice that we have here uh, in Solvo. I think that uh, setting an example uh, is the best way to show your developers uh, what you expect them. And, it happened even to me as the CEO of the company to discuss the feature uh, with the developers working on it. And while discussing it, uh, I try to help them think about um, uh, how could this theoretically, theoretically be exploited? Uh, how could someone who gets a hold of this little piece of data could cause damage to our customers? And by asking these questions, I try to help them to understand that I expect them while designing uh, uh, this next feature to ask themselves these questions and to make sure that the solution that they come up with is respectful to the most basic standards of security, of encryption, <clears throat> of protecting data. Um, and I think that, yeah, by setting an example, this is exactly what they need. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, in order to be better developers, in order to, to develop <clears throat> better features. Excellent. Great. So, uh, Shira, 
uh, I'd like to make a little parenthesis here and focus on the viewers. We have viewers out there who might be, or many of them, many of our viewers are software developers who could be watching and might want to come work for you at some point. So what would you tell them as it pertains to Solvo as a great company to work for? What would you feel that defines the company in a way that would entice the greatest of the greatest out there who come and work for you and apply for a job? I think that the most important thing is to think outside of the box. Uh, when we interview new developers, we're not looking for um, a specific coding language. Uh, in, in the interview, they can write code in Bash if they want to. As long as they show us, they can uh, take an idea, break it into little steps, and write code that solves some kind of problem. Um, so it's not about being the best Python developer. It's mm -hmm. about thinking outside of the box, trying to think about the edge cases and about how can you um, build the, the most effective solution. That's one thing. Another thing that we put a lot of uh, uh, attention to while looking for, for talents is the kind of person that you are. For us, it was very important from day one to create a very healthy uh, uh, organization. We started, you know, building it, David and myself, thinking about the time when it's going to be 200 uh, engineers one day. We wanted to make sure that the culture that we're building is the kind of culture that enables people to ask questions. We always say that there isn't such a thing as a stupid question, right? There is also, you shouldn't be shy to ask something. Of course, I, I expect you to, to, to Google it maybe and look at the first two results before you come and ask. But generally, yeah, you can ask the most basic question if, if you're looking for an answer. And I expect every developer from the most senior one to the newest one who only joined the yesterday, to be patient and respectful for your colleagues and, and answer and help them because by stopping whatever task that you're doing and helping your friend who is sitting uh, next to you, you're helping the company. And if you, you can't see that, if you're all, only thinking about your personal achievement, here there, there is no such thing as a personal achievement. Every milestone that we make, we make it as a company. It's no more mine than you know, the newest developer that we have on the team or the newest uh, a, a HR recruiter. This is a team effort and we're looking for, for team players. I think that um, knowledge is something that you acquire along the way and you can always gain more knowledge. But being a good person, well, this is something I expect you to come from home with. There you have it. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you, Shira. I appreciate it. So, uh, Kim, I know you have a question. Please go. Yeah. So I can see, or I get the sense that I'm seeing a lot of your personal background, your experience in the military as a leader, the absolute necessity to trust, to question things, to investigate, really overflowing into how you've founded and created Solvo to be. So my question for you is, what exactly are those top questions that you're either asking yourself or asking your your teammates? Like, what are the questions that you ask? I ask why a lot. Um, it's really important because otherwise it can get you so confused and and you know miss the the tracks. Uh, uh, we get to speak to to. To, even before we started, you know, Solvo as it is today, David and I went and spoke with different security practitioners from different organizations and asked them about the problems that they're having today, the challenges that they have. And, you know, they each tell you about their challenge. And you're not always sure if this is a, a problem that more organizations share or maybe this is a specific issue that this organization is having today. So by asking them, yeah, but but why does it bother you? Why is this a problem? Why haven't you solved it yet? Uh, by asking these questions, we make sure that we understand the motivation 
this is something that we still keep on doing today. When talking about new features with, with customers, we always make sure we understand why do they need that? Because we have to prioritize. We have you know many people asking us for many different things. One of them wants that little button over here and the other one wants a, a drop down over there. And we need to understand if this is really necessary or do they just want, want it because because they, they want it, because they have a very, very specific use case. Asking why is something I always had to do. Um, when in the military, you, you, always, you never have enough resources for everything. Uh, and uh, it, it was maybe, you know, the only time in my life when everything I did was never for, for profit, right? The, the KPIs are, are not really measurable. Um, and you always have to prioritize. So you always have to be on top of things and to make sure you understand. And you have to make some tough decisions sometimes. You decide not to take care of this really important issue because there is that other really, really important issue that has to be handled and addressed right now. Um, so being able to ask these questions is, is what maybe made me a better manager today, I think being able to to make a decision sometimes we don't have enough information uh, to make the most ideal decision but we still have to make a decision so by asking why i try to gather as much information as possible in order to make a decision right now nice great so sure we're, we're coming up on time but before we wrap up wrap up i think it'd be important to understand the markets that you're serving uh which use cases are you seeing more traction in right now and why um the most traction that we see today is with organizations that are creating cloud native applications we see that either with companies that were established in the last you know five to ten years who were born into the cloud or with much larger companies that are so big that you have different units that some are still maintaining the on-prem and some, ha some have end-to-end, uh, uh, -end standalone uh, cloud applications. Um, the, working with, with those cloud-native applications organizations is where I see the most success because these organizations have implemented or are trying to implement a CI-CD they want to, the developer to write code and then to have an automated process into production with as little interruption as possible. That approach, by the way, is definitely what we at Solvo believe in. We believe that Solvo is just a plug into the CI process. And while testing the application, we also test for the necessary security permissions and prepare them, make them ready for the next deployment. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you with us. By the way, how do people sign up? Is Are you marketing to the companies or the end developers? How will people sign up to, okay. to try this out? I'm not out? quite sure what went wrong. Um, so That's... so by, by visiting our website, solvo.cloud, um, we, have, we have a free uh, security assessment uh, that anyone can run for their AWS environment. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the best way to approach us because by that uh, you will also get access to our uh, case studies and everything else you might want to know in order to try out um, the product. Awesome. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, just stay with us as we go off the air in just a minute. I know it's quite late there. We'll do a little quick wrap up. Carlos, what do we got coming up for the rest of the week? We got two shows, Tulio. We have tomorrow, Julia Julia Slanina, the CEO and co-founder of Treehouse and the topic Femtech, Femtech and maternal health. And Thursday, we have Michael Wood, the chief strategy officer at Inciting Health. The topic is the growing consumerization of healthcare. That's what we have for this week right here on Dojo Live as usual at 12 p.m. Pacific. So remember, folks, join us. Don't miss it and be safe. And thank you, you for being with us. Thank you, See you everyone.